Welcome back. Now in today's video, we're going to continue from where we left off in the last video. So if you haven't seen that yet, you can see a link in the description. But just to summarize where we left off, we started adding the, uh, just the, the name of the functions we're going to be using in our app.js file. So in today's video, we're going to start to write out these functions. And the first one will be to uh, fetch our notes from the database. And then we'll have ones to actually save notes, edit them, and all of these different things. So let's start by jumping back into our code and start working on these new functions. So here I am in Atom now, and you can see up here, we have the functions we made in the last video. So the first one we're going to do is the fetch notes function. So what we want to start by doing is in all of these functions where we're collecting or sending data, we need to make a call to our firebase.js file, so our background page. So we'll show how to do that in a moment, but first let's start by actually setting out what we need to do to actually get our notes. So before we start fetching our notes, we need to make sure that we clear any existing notes so that we're not adding duplicate notes. So to do that, we say document query selector, and then we grab the ID of our, um, our holder of our different pages. So this is called pages holder. And then all we do is set the inner HTML of this element to be empty. And then after here, we want to send a request to our background page. So we do this by saying Chrome runtime send message. And what this will do is send a, um, a command to our background page that will let us perform these actions. So we just say command as we did in the last video, and we're going to name these. So we'll say fetch notes. That'll be the name of our command. And then the data we want to pass in here will just be an empty object. You, you don't really even need to put this here. This will just say notes like this, but again, you can leave that empty. And then we want to set our response. So this is where we'll have a callback that when the background page fetches what we need from the database, it will send us a response to this function just here. So we'll just open this up like this. So that'll be where our response for our notes that we have in our database will be sent to. So that means in here, we need to listen for a response. So when we get this data sent in, we're gonna say, set a new variable of notes, and this will be equal to response, if I can spell that, response data. So that'll be the data object inside of our response. And then we wanna to start to build out the display of our notes. So we're gonna call this um, nav, it's a simple um, navigation, and we'll use a unordered list for this. And to keep things simple, we're gonna set a window object or a window variable that will be where our notes will go. So we'll call this notes, and this will just be an array. So we'll set the empty array here. And then all we're gonna do is loop through our notes uh, variable just here from our response, and then find all the different notes that we have. So we just do that by saying for const note ID, in notes like this. So each time we go through our response data and find a new note, we're gonna set that as a note ID so that we can use that to actually fetch it, well not fetch it, so we can use it as the click event that we have an actual ID for these elements. So that is our um, thing just here. And then we're going to basically add each of these into our nav. So when we just say plus equals, it will just add this onto this string. So we'll say li, data, note, note ID equals note ID, very straightforward. Um, and then we wanna close that off, close off the LI just here. And then inside of our list item, we're going to add the information for this note. So what we need to do is again, add into here and say notes, and then we want to use our note ID again. So use, again, inside here, this is an array. Use our note ID to access the element in the array that we need. And then there is our icon. And then we're going to do the same thing for the title. So again, we'll just add it in and say notes, note ID, title. So that will add everything into our nav. 
But what we need to do next is make sure that we're adding each of these into our um, window variable as well. So we've got our notes, note ID equals notes, note ID. So this just means we can access each of our notes outside of the scope of this function. So that when we want to add click events to switch between the different notes, we can do that here rather than um, creating a separate function. There are slightly better ways to do this at scale and um, to make it easier, but for now, or to make it more um, faster if you have lots and lots of notes. But for this example, it work completely fine. So that is our um, function just here. Now we just need to make sure that we tidy up our nav just here by saying to close off our unordered list. And then after all of that, we're just going to say document query selector pages holder inner HTML equals nav. So basically everything there we're doing is first removing the content um, from that page, sending a request to our background page um, to fetch all of our notes, setting our variable just here, then creating this nav um, string, which will go through each of the notes that we found and add it into this string before we finally add that all to the page. Just make sure that we put a dot there because it's a class. So that is almost everything we need for our fetch notes function. We just need to add a, another function down here, down here, which will be a event listener. So any clicks onto these um, items will actually be able to be um, heard. So we're just gonna use this function down here. So listen for clicks and run that just here. So that is the first of the functions. So next we're going to actually create a function to listen for clicks. So before we do that, we need to add a, um, another window variable at the very, very top here called first open. So this will be false to begin with. Now this will basically make sure that we're not running certain um, event listeners more than once. So for things like uh, create new note or uh, delete note, we only want this to be added once, not every time we fetch a new note. Okay, so down here, we're going to update our listen for clicks function. So just scroll down a little bit. So what we're essentially doing here is adding event listeners to all of the places on the page that we need them. So the first thing we need to do is set a, um, an array of all the list items, so all the notes that we have on the page. So we're going to do this by saying um, this new LIs or list items. This will be document query selector. And then this will be any of the sort of unordered list items that we have on the page. We could add pages holder here as well, just to keep things nice and organized. We need to make sure that we actually say query selector all, so that we fetch all of the list items on the page and this then puts them into an array. So then what we need to do is loop through that array. So we just say for, um, we for loop through all of this, very similar to um, any loops you've done before. LIs at the one that we've incremented to here, add event listener on click, run our function just here. So basically any time that any of the list items or notes have been clicked, it will send us straight into here. So this is where we want to say change page. So in other words, change the note that's currently been selected to be this data set note ID, which is lowercase actually. Once you use data set, all of these are lowercase. So that is going to, going to use that change page function just here. And that's going to take the data or data set and then note ID attribute from up here. So this is essentially this um, object or this element here. So when you click on it, you can still access it and then change the page. So that is the first part of our listen for clicks um, function. After that, we need to add a separate part underneath that will only be run once. So that's why we needed the first open uh, variable set. So we're gonna say window if window first open is false, we need to run this code down here. 
what we want to do first is make sure that we are saying that it is true. So this is only going to run in here. All this code underneath is going to be run once. So we're going to put this inside a try block just in case anything breaks and it, so it doesn't break the whole page. Um, we'll just console log this error as well so we can see it. This just catches any errors um, that we might not have found. So then we're going to say var open note. This just will make sure that if we can retain the current note that you've been selected, if you go off and then come on to your page again, or if you create a new tab, it will remember which one you were on last. So all we need to say is local storage, get item, notes, last open page. Now I'll explain more about what this does um, later on, probably in the next video, but this essentially will open to the last note that we were on if we open a new tab. So we need, down here we're just making sure that the open note isn't empty and if it is, we just say document, query selector, so in our unordered list, then list item, they want to access the data, note ID, and then use the actual variable just here, so the open note. And then all we want to say after we found this element is click. So let's just check that's all in there correctly. Yep. So that is all we need to have for our listen for clicks function. So if we save that, what you'll find at the moment is because we don't have any notes in our database, this won't pull anything in. So let's jump into our database and just add a couple of example notes. So what I have in uh, my database here, so as you can see at the moment, my database is completely empty. So if I just add a new um, object on here called notes and then open it up, this will be our note ID. And then underneath here, we just need a couple of attributes. So it's icon, this is where we have our emoji. So if we just select any type of emoji for now, and then title, our first note. And then all we need after that, after that we just type in body, and then this is where we have the, the main area of text for our note. So if we add this and then open our extension, what we would find is this should begin to fetch our note. Let's just check if we have any errors here. Unexpected string, line 12. Okay, so what we're missing just here, you see this note ID, we need to add a plus just here. Should hopefully remove this error. Yep, so all we need to do is add the corresponding fetch notes um, command into our background page, and then we should start to see these notes appear here. So let's jump into our firebase.js um, file now. So then down here we have the code that we left it with previously. So we're saying if command equals, we've just got dot dot. So we want to change this to fetch notes. I think that's what we called it. If we just check in here. Yep, so as long as this is the same, so fetch notes. So this is where we want to put in all of the code to fetch our notes from the database. So all we have to put into here is the, we're going to use Firebase just here. So we'll say Firebase, let's make sure that's indented correctly. Firebase database ref is forward slash notes, as we saw when we put it into our database. Then we just say once value, then, so it only run this once, they want to set it into a function called snapshot, and then there's our response just here. So then all we need to do is use our response object, which we mentioned um, when we were writing our, our call to use fetch notes, and then we're just going to say type result. You can tweak this up a little bit. This is, I think this is the best way to send these responses, just so you know exactly what is happening success and then all we need to do here is put our data and this would just be snapshot so just here and then val for value and then we're going to pass through the request that was sent to us as well which can help a lot for debugging so there we have it that should be our fetch notes um, function so if we reload our extension now that's true we're not actually running this function yet so if we look in our app.js we can see just down here 
underneath here, we just need to call this function. Otherwise, it won't actually be called on the page. So one thing you need to do as well is make sure that down here you say return true. Now this just makes sure that we keep our port open. So what you'll see down here is we had this thing which said the message port closed before a response was received. But if we refresh now, okay, I just need to fix that. So as you can see, just here we have node ID, not note ID, and here as well. Okay, anywhere we've put note ID, we just need to change to say note. There we go. So now that that's working, you can see we have our element here and it's updating down the side. So next, we just need to make sure we have click events so that when these items are clicked, that our change page um, function actually does something. So at the moment, you can see when we click on our note down here, we're calling our change page just here. So if we add a callback just here or a bit of code just here to say, note ID and then refresh. Okay, so you need to make sure that this listen for clicks up here happens inside this area just here because otherwise it will be, it will run before we actually hear the response from our send message. So if we go back now and reload our code, we can see that when we click on our notes, it's appearing down here, which is using our change page function. So in the next video, we'll start to um, actually write out the functions for the remaining areas of our app.js. So this will be to actually change our pages, save any edits that we make to our notes, and to clear notes, which essentially is adding a new note, new note onto the page. So I hope you found this video helpful. It's slightly different to the other ones where it's more in depth with our actual JavaScript and sending information to our database, receiving information from our database, so in the next video, it'll be more of the same. And then after that, we'll start to look into authorization using Firebase as well. So thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe for more videos like this.